Hi guys, today we've got 12 handy hints to help with your MIDI editing in Logic Pro. Let's jump in. So here I've got a MIDI region that I want to work with and there are a few ways that I can show the MIDI data within it. I can double click and that opens up the edit window. I can use the E key to open up the edit window as well. And that will actually open up on whichever of the piano roll, score or smart tempo that I was previously working on. What I can also do is push the P key for piano roll and that always takes me into the piano roll, whichever view I was previously in. Now this is quite a small sort of uh, screen here, it's only like the bottom third of the screen or something there. I can drag this around uh, within the overall Logic program window, but one thing that's quite useful is I can click and drag from the piano roll there, that blue um, piano roll icon, and it will open it up into a new window of its own. So I could put that onto a second monitor if I was running a multi-screen uh, display there. I could expand that and now I've got a whole lot more real estate uh, for my uh, MIDI editing. Another way of getting into that view is by using Command and 4 and that will also open up uh, the MIDI uh, piano roll in a separate window. And in fact that also works directly from the region here. I can use Command and 4 and there you go. Uh, I get a much, much better view when I'm working with uh, quite complex MIDI data. So here we are in a piano roll and you can see all the MIDI data by default is on a dark background. Now visually you can change that if you would prefer to a light background. I'll just show you how. Uh, use command and comma and that opens up settings. We're just going to check that in advanced we've had uh, enable complete features selected there and that will now give us access to the view menu. You can come in now to editors and you've got piano roll bright background. I can just switch that on and that will uh, turn all of the background to my piano roll MIDI editors to a, a, a bright background uh, and you can choose whichever you prefer there. Everything else is the same, all of the colours are the same for the velocity. It's down to personal preference but that may help you out. So here I am in the piano roll. I've got a couple of very simple MIDI regions on this track. I've got a minor scale here and a couple of chords that I've played in over here. Uh, Logic's got a really handy feature to hide everything on the piano roll that doesn't appear in my MIDI region. And all I've got to do is hit on collapse mode here. And now it's hidden everything on the piano roll that is not being used in that region. If I click over on my chords, it adapts and just shows me the chords uh, or the notes over here that appear in my region. And, and in fact, if I select both regions together, it uh, consolidates it down to, uh, uh, to just show me the notes that are there. Everything else is hidden. If I want to go back at any time, just click off there and it uh, reveals the rest of the piano roll. Click back on and now I'm left with just the notes that I'm working on. Really, really handy when you're editing complex MIDI regions. So here we are in a piano roll. I've recorded a quick hi-hat into uh, this very simple drum loop. And you can see some of the notes are out of time there. So if I wanted to go and put these back into time, I could drag them around like this. Um, I could edit the length of them um, and I could uh, select them um, in groups if I wanted to. But the easiest way just to select the entire uh, row of hi-hats there is just to click over here in the piano roll on the hi-hat key, um, which is an F sharp in this case. And uh, you can see that's just selected everything in that row. This works on any key so I can select all the snares, all the kicks and it goes through the entire region and selects all of the notes for me. So really simple, all I have to do now, hit Q, and that's going to quantize those uh, hi-hats for me. Easy. Okay, so here I am in the piano roll, um, and you can see here the velocity of the notes are represented by the color and also the length of this line in relation to the note duration there. And I can see them all against the piano roll. If I hover over, uh, my mouse pointer actually obscures the pitch. I can actually see the pitch over here. Uh, you, you've got it whenever you're hovering over any of these, um, these notes here, it tells you the pitch and the timing. But sometimes that's uh, it's not obvious if you're just glancing 
dancing and seeing where the notes are. So another quick way uh, of, um, of making that a little bit easier to see is to come up into the view option here and uh, you can choose note labels. What that will do is replace the, uh, the line for the velocity with a numerical value and it shows you the pitch against each note on the piano roll. Quite a handy feature. So a quick tip for zooming in and out of regions, and this works in the track window as well as the editor, is to hold down the command key and use your cursor keys, your arrow keys, to do up and down will uh, expand the height of the tracks and left and right will zoom you in and out. This works in uh, the tracks window there, or if I go into the editor, the same thing. I can use that to very, very quickly zoom in and out of my, uh, my MIDI region. Really, really handy feature. So it's really super simple to uh, copy notes in Logic. Here I've got a, uh, a very simple couple of chords. So let's say I wanted to add a seventh note to that uh, second uh, C major chord there. I can uh, click on that note there and hold the option key down, which brings up this plus icon, drag down, add my A sharp in, and here we go. Very, very simple. If I wanted to duplicate the whole progression, what I can do now is select all of that. Again, I can drag. If I, if I were to just drag it, um, it would move the notes. But if I hold down the Option key, it will actually do a copy for me. Very, very quick and simple. Handy feature when you're editing MIDI. So here we are in the piano roll. I've got a couple of simple chords. So if I wanted to add some more uh, dynamics to those and, and add, say, sevenths and ninths and so on and so forth, I could start to drag some of these notes around, but sometimes I lose the, uh, the position there. And uh, there's an easy way of doing this using the keyboard, I find. So you select the note that you want to move, and let's say I wanted to change this into a C major uh, with, a, with a seventh chord. Now, a little tip is that if you've got the C note in the uh, in the bass, you don't necessarily need to duplicate it in the chord itself. So what I can do is just move that down two semitones there. And, and Logic allows me to do that very simply by using the Option key and the up or down arrow. So you can move that very, very simply there. So now that's created a seventh of that chord. Another way you can um, play around with the chords is actually by um, changing the inversion. And so that means effectively taking the lowest note here and moving it up to the top. So rather than a G2, I might want a G3. Now I can drag that all the way up there. Um, but that uh, that's, uh, takes a bit of time and uh, I could make a mistake there potentially. So rather than doing that, all you have to do is select the note, hold down Option and Shift and push up. And that now changes it a whole octave. So very, very quickly, I can start to change the feel of my chords just by playing around with the keyboard. So here we are in the piano roll. We've got an eight bar um, region of MIDI data. It's just a, a four chord loop that plays around. Now, when you're dragging MIDI notes around, if I wanted to start editing this and playing around, you can see that, you know, depending on how uh, lively your mouse is, it can be all over the show. So Logic's got a way of uh, helping you to control that a little bit easier. If you hold Command and Comma, to go into the settings menu uh, you want the general tab and you can choose editing and down here you've got an option to limit dragging to one direction in the piano roll editor and score editor and the tracks area so I'm just going to select the piano roll editor there and I'm going to close that and now what happens when I click on any MIDI note in here I can only drag it in one direction at a time so if I start dragging along that uh, horizontal um, there, it will it will lock it into that pitch. Similarly, if I just wanted to drag the note down, it remains in exactly the uh, the same position on the timeline, so I don't mess up the timing. Really useful feature if you're dealing with lots and lots of complex notes. So if you've got Enable Complete Features switched on in the Advanced Settings menu, when you select any region in Logic, you can actually push the U key and that will cycle to that region. Really, really handy for any kind of editing in the system. 
But what if I'm working on a MIDI region and I just wanted to focus on uh, looping just this section between bar say 14 and 16. Now I could drag and reset it manually, but it's much quicker for me to just select the notes that I'm interested in there, push U and Logic will now just cycle on that section. If I wanted to go back to the region, all I have to do is click on the region up in the tracks window there, push U again, and it resets it to the entire region. Really, really handy when you're working on long sections of MIDI. So here I am in the piano roll, and I've got a long sustained chord here. Now, if I were to cycle that section from bar 10, it won't actually trigger the sound. And that's because it's missing, the playhead is missing the start of the MIDI notes. Uh, so I can overcome that by choosing File, Project Settings, MIDI. And now I can come in and select uh, Chase. And I want to switch on Notes. So it's Chase Notes. Now if I play from bar 10, it picks up that MIDI data. Really, really handy feature, particularly if you're working with long pads or strings or anything like that. So in the piano roll by default, as you click on any note, Logic will trigger it and it will sound. Now I like to cycle a section and edit on the fly. Something like this. And I might sort of play around with notes until I end up with something I'm happy with. Now, as you can hear, as I'm moving notes around there, it's triggering all of the notes and anything that I drag through as well. It's a bit distracting. So if I wanted to avoid that, what I can do is just switch off MIDI out. Uh, and you can use the option uh, O key there or just click on that icon. Now when I click on notes, it won't trigger. It will only trigger these notes now when the playhead crosses them like this. And that just means that I can play around and just cycle it until I end up with something I'm happy with. So here we are in the piano roll. I'm zoomed in on the first couple of chords here from a larger MIDI region, which is cycled in the track window above. I've got catch playhead switched on. So as I uh, push play here, what's going to happen is that my piano roll is going to refresh and update uh, with the playhead position in the track window. If I switch it off, that will now remain static. But an important thing to note is that uh, if I push play again, it jumps back to the start. If I wanted to stop doing that, I just need to control click here and uncheck uh, catch when starting playhead. Now what will happen is with it switched off, if I switch that off there, um, and I push play, it will stay wherever I put it to, which can be useful if I'm working on that particular piece of MIDI information there. Now, another thing to note is while um, I've got catch switched on, the uh, playhead is moving in the piano roll and the MIDI data is static. It keeps refreshing the display. I can change the way that that works by clicking on view here and selecting scroll in play. So now when I play it, the playhead will remain static and the MIDI notes will smoothly scroll uh, past the playhead in the uh, piano roll window. So you can switch that on and off with control and the tilde key. And that just changes the way it behaves. Pretty useful feature. So there you go, guys. I hope you found that useful. Thanks very much for watching. Please do like and subscribe and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thank you.